What's up guys? It's been a while. It's been a long time since I've done a vlog for YouTube. Really excited to do this. It's been four weeks since the natural Olympia and yeah, I've changed a lot. Don't look quite like I'm dying now, um, but it's been a good four weeks of recovering, enjoying, giving back to like family, friends. And um, today is gonna show you like how I've been recovering. You know, my diet, my full day of eating on my rest day, um, to recover post-show, I'll, I'll go into that, I'll discuss like what you want to do post-show, um, how you should approach that, that phase, uh, because I think it's a very important one, and it's, there's quite a fine line between getting it right and wrong. And then um, also I'll do a Q&A in this video as well, and just run through some questions that you guys have. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to crack on with this video and show you my full day of eating at four weeks after the natural Olympia. So we've got the first meal, we do oats with uh, just ghost cereal milk protein. Really, really good. You can get ghost at Elite Such UK, use my discount code uh, PAL10. But yeah, 50 grams of this tastes unreal. This is like perfect for the off season, more so than when you're in prep, you might want to do more isolates so the macros are a little bit more friendly, but yeah, if you want a nice tasting way and you don't need to worry about macros so much, then yeah, I definitely recommend Ghost. Really good. to your city. When? After the Arnold for the Boston Pro. We're all coming. This is my favorite, favorite meal to have. It's the best combo ever. And if you haven't tried it, do not knock it. Like, you need to try it first. So, peanut butter. I like to put it on the rice first so it melts a bit whilst the rice is warm. This peanut butter is an absolute game changer. Um, not, it's, it's nice now, but like on prep, if you are struggling and you want a bit more volume, this like, you can pour it and it's like a sauce. So it's like drizzle, it says you drizzle it. And the volume you get for 20 grams of peanut butter is so good. So I'm just gonna put that all over the rice. So that's 20 grams. I upgraded to a dual air fryer, which is a game changer. Look at that crispy chicken. And air fried broccoli as well is so good. And a bit of sriracha. I don't track, when I'm in the off season, I do not track my sources. I think there's a time and place to track it, but you don't need to do it in the off season. You gotta at one point not be overthinking, I think, about food. Whilst obviously I track all my food and stuff like that, like, there, there needs to be a point where it's like, something you're eating, or like some sauce or something you're not thinking about. I just think it's really important because otherwise, when you quit bodybuilding, I feel like you're gonna struggle going from not tracking to then just not thinking about food. And whilst I always think you should think about food, I think sometimes it can play on your mind too much. Like I, in the past, I'd be looking at food off plan meals and stuff, and I'd be like almost like trying to imagine the macros, looking at the amount of food, thinking how much is this, carbs, fats, protein, and it's not worth it. It isn't worth it. There's times to track food and there's times to enjoy food and not think about it. And when you're not thinking about it, the last thing you want to be doing is then go, like wondering what, what it was, how many calories. Um, 
I think if you can eat intuitively, not think about it too much, and then also maintain a healthy body weight when you're older and you're not bodybuilding anymore, I think that is the best way to do it. Um, you do not need to track uh, your sources to do that. You just, just eye it, it's fine. A little bit of barbecue as well. I don't, I don't have barbecue sauce during prep because it's too calorific. It's not like awful, but again, like, it's just not in prep, you don't really do that. And then off season, much easier. Look at that. That is lovely. We've got 100 grams of rice, uh, basmati, uh, there's 200 grams of greens. I've got some left over. I'm not gonna just ruin my whole chicken and rice meal just being like all greens. And then 150 grams of chicken breast and then 20 grams of nut butter as well. So the macros are roughly uh, 70, 80 grams of carbs, uh, about 40 grams of protein and then 10 grams of, well, 12 grams of fat. So yeah, decent meal. Uh, this is like my favorite, favorite meal right now. Peanut butter in rice and chicken, with broccoli, sriracha. It is perfect. Like, do not knock it until you try it. You're probably thinking, what? But what about chicken satay? You know? <laughs> so it is basically that. But yeah, the key thing is to add some sriracha, add some spices, seasoning, paprika, so it all goes really nicely together. And yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. Dorian's legs were incredible. They were massive. Yeah, they, I think it doesn't translate in photos. Maybe that's why. Yeah, it doesn't. And yeah. he had the biggest calves of all time. There's actual snow. <laughs> Mad. I feel like it never snows in England nowadays, but it's the first time I've seen snow in a while. And if I was on prep right now, I would be <laughs> absolutely fucked. I don't know if you remember me wearing the beanies when it wasn't even that cold yet, uh, but yeah, it's just the body fat when it gets low, you just get so cold. And luckily, now I've got a bit more body fat on me when it's needed, because otherwise I would be absolutely screwed. <laughs> um, I'm going to town because it's Ruby's birthday on Wednesday, and I need to just get some last few things, and then also I need to do a bit of Christmas shopping. So. I'm always trying to make the most of rest days because you have a little bit more time. I've done all my check-ins, so I'm going to go to town now and do that. And yeah, I'll get back to the next meal after that. So meal number three. So it's been a few hours. So um, again, chicken breast is going down. Air fryer being used again, of course. So meal number three, uh, it's a bit of a weird one. I have never had, I haven't had rice cakes in so long. Literally didn't have them on prayer for anything, but I was out in town and I needed to get some carbs in that's very easy to eat. So I just grabbed some of these. These rice cakes are obviously so good if you're out and about and the salt vinegar ones are so good. So that's what I got. And then I've got chicken and veg on the side. So just five rice cakes, so nothing crazy. This is actually, the smallest meal of the day is about 40 grams of carbs, about five, six, seven grams of fat, uh, about 40 grams of protein. And yeah, so the next two meals are a lot more interesting. And yeah, I'll get into those after. And um, we'll answer some questions after this meal as well. So yeah, time to eat. You know, we, all, we all have friends in bodybuilding that go to doctors. And I have a lot of friends that don't go to doctors. They don't want to fucking know anything about anything. Mm -hmm. They're so dry, <laughs> but they're so good. <laughs> right, so uh, we're going to do some questions because whilst I will always hear good things about the full day of eating videos, I feel like it can be just a bit repetitive and I want to just, you know, have something in between. <laughs> 
that is just uh, slightly different to just me showing you what I'm eating. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go through a couple questions and yeah, we'll just start off with tips to drop in stubborn body fat. Now, that is like the hardest thing is sometimes in the fat loss phase, you know, you can be losing weight and you're like, well, it's not shifting off a certain area. People, you've probably heard like so many times on YouTube, how to lose stubborn belly fat or how to lose. So, um, you know, the truth is we cannot target fat loss anywhere. We just, you can't, it's literally not possible. Um, there has been some things where people think, oh, maybe if I rub some Yahimbine cream uh, when fasted and do some cardio, it might help move some areas. But I don't, you know, it's not gonna really do anything. And the truth is you can't, like you literally can't control where it comes off. However, if there's an area which is stubborn and you feel like doesn't look lean in compared to your other body parts, if you want to make it appear leaner, work on bringing the muscle up in that area. So for example, a weakness for myself is my glutes in the past and building up my glutes will allow me to get more of that striated detailed glute look. And that can take time once you've got the density where it needs to be. Um, my biggest advice is if you are trying to drop off stubborn fat and you can't see it move yet, is make sure you're analyzing your physique in all areas when you uh, do your check-ins so you can stay motivated and you can see that body fat is coming off in certain areas you know if you're just looking at your belly and it's moving off your legs and your back you may think oh i'm not losing weight well actually you are it's just not come off there yet that will then mean that you will be able to stay motivated because you can see that you are making progress and you can understand that eventually the fat will come off the areas you want it to it just takes time you know, you just got to stay in a deficit, keep losing body fat, and eventually it will move from that area. Um, your body will decide. It, you can't control it. It will just decide where it takes body fat from. So, um, yeah, that is basically how I would approach it if you have stubborn body parts with fat loss. So this is a good one because it's relevant to today, right? So the question is how many and how do you structure your off-plan meals in off-season? So obviously you're seeing how I'm structuring my meals, but... Um, you know, when I am in an off season setting, I like to have a bit more flexibility with the foods I eat. You know, maybe sometimes I'll change a food source and focus on just hitting the macros in that meal, but understanding that I'm having, you know, appropriate food sources. I think that can really take time to nail. You, you need to get a good amount of experience with nutrition to truly understand when you can change a food source and still, you know, get the desired things met in terms of having bioavailable proteins, um, having foods that digest well, having the right types of foods at the right time. Um, that can take some time, but you know, if you, as long as you're, you, you've got like, you know, the basic sort of food sources in there. So for example, carbs, it could be rice, pasta, oats, potatoes, that's all good. Um, you know, meats, obviously just go for things that you know bodybuilders would have like chicken, um, beef, um, fish, white fish, prawns, tuna, um, you know, protein sources that you know are complete. You know, don't start throwing pork in there and, st and stuff because there's a reason why you don't see bodybuilders eat pork and lamb and, and stuff like that. It's because it's not complete, it's not a complete protein source. Uh, but yeah, a bit more flexibility. I, I've i wrote my own meal plan and then I'll change food sources when I want. Uh, but I will not be so strict as opposed to when I'm in prep, I'm having the same foods all the time because food focus needs to be controlled as much as possible. So one more question I'm gonna do. Uh, low expenditure in bulk, bracket, steps, cardio, can this make the cut easier? Absolutely. So, you know, lower expenditure means that you have therefore a higher amount of tools to utilize as you move into a deficit. If you are able to, you know, at least have body weight holding on a low amount of expenditure and a high amount of food, that means your metabolic rate is set up perfectly to allow for a successful diet phase. You know, your, your output is low, your food is high, therefore your metabolism is able to, if you're holding body weight on that, to burn through food very fast therefore allowing you to use a lot of tools. So say you move into a deficit, you implement some cardio, 
you pull food a bit, your output's still pretty low, you can then bump up cardio lows and that will just be very effective if you need to, if you want to. However, or, you, you know, it's all relative, so it's all just calories, you could pull food instead. But what it means is if, if you are able to have very low output and high food, brilliant. However, it's all the same thing. So if you have higher output through the bulk and you therefore eat uh, a lot more food as a result and your overall caloric intake across the week and your expenditure and all stuff equates to the same, then, you know, it doesn't make a difference. It, it makes zero difference to how the cut will move. So yes, low output might be useful, but you know, in short, it's all the same thing. It's just calories. So don't get too fixated on doing one thing or the other. Just do whatever works for you. If you prefer to move a bit more, if you, or if you prefer to move a bit less, that's up to you. You gotta guess what meal I'm cooking. I think you can probably tell. <laughs> Meal four is a, actually I can't, I had to do um, cooked weight because it said it on the back. So it was 320 grams of cooked weight pasta. I have no idea what that would be. I think it's like 160 grams of pasta. And then 150 grams of beef mince, 5% fat, and then a half jar of tomato sauce. So basically spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Um, I'm just making the most now. I'm in the off season. Of, you know, being a bit more flexible with, with my food, trying different things, and yeah, I always like to save most of my calories near to the end of the day, just so you know when I'm training tomorrow, I'm just full of carbs because you know a bit bro, bro sciencey, but it's it's in my head. It's like that's how I want to do it. So um, yeah, pretty calorie dense meal. This 32 grams of protein, and then like 10 grams of fat and 130 grams of carbs. So pretty calorie dense meal this, and I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> and then, I'll get this. You trying to get an extra inch out of you or what? So final meal of the day, we've got chocolate banana, complete strength cream and rice. We've got the ghost cookie, chocolate chip cookie protein. Milo is just attacking my protein, what is he doing? <laughs> Milo, it's not yours. Milo. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you can't have whey yet. You can't have whey. Not yet. Yeah, so I made a paste out of the chocolate chip cookie whey. This is probably one of the nicest ways you can get. The macros are a bit worse, but I think it's worth it in the off season, honestly, like, you're not on prep, like you can pull some calories away. Yeah, chocolate chip cookie, so, so good. So, last meal of the day, 150 grams of cream of rice. On top is a whey paste that is a little bit too liquidy because I fucked it and put too much water in. <laughs> um, and then 30 grams of nut butter and 25 grams of dark chocolate. It's a quite a high amount of fat to be honest in this last meal just because I enjoy it. It's really nice on top of the cream of rice and it's good to just slow down that um, digestion a bit so you know it's like you know when people say you take a casein way before bed having fats with protein just slows down um you know a bit and it just helps it helps you get protein synthesis for a bit longer through the night Hel helps you just hold carbs a little bit better uh so that's what i'm doing obviously like i said at this point when loads of food is in it doesn't really matter <laughs> but 
yeah, it's a really nice meal. Chocolate, banana, cream of rice, chocolate, chip cookie, whey, perfect. So that finishes today's macros at 450 um, grams of carbs, 70 grams of fat, and 220 grams of protein. That is my post show recovery diet right now, which has allowed me to get body weight up into a good point, but also has allowed my met metabolic rate to upregulate very quick um, because it's now holding on this amount of food, which is really good. And, you know, it's in a, in a great spot. So yeah, just gonna enjoy this food and just chill out now. Obviously it's the evening, have this about an hour and a half before bed, relax, unwind, get a good night's sleep and I've got legs tomorrow. So yeah, really excited for that. So thank you for watching guys. Please drop a like if and yeah, subscribe if you're new. Uh, really appreciate all the support and I will catch you in the next video. I think I'm gonna get out you know, videos pretty soon. I'm gonna do like every five days hopefully so I can up, up the rate of videos for you guys. But yeah, I will catch you in the next video. See you soon.